Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. Did you miss me? We have been on a little bit of a sabbatical, but I am back and I'm kicking off my non-sabbatical with two amazingly talented artists. We have Christy Lee is here with Mills Gallery and her own Christy Lee Art. Uh, and then we have our special guest, and Christy's been on the show a while, but our special guest is Vicki Wilson. Vicki Wilson is uh, doing an exhibition at Mills Gallery on June 30th. It's called Chaos and Contrast. Did I do that right? Uh, it is this Perfect. Friday from 6 to 8.30. She's got a fantastic story. I'm excited to have you both on the show. Welcome. How y'all doing today? I'm great. How are you, Ted? Fantastic. I'm excited. I'm I wore a little color to be artist, artistry oriented. Um, and we got to give obviously a shout out to Boris, who's in the background. We love our Boris. Uh, all right. So let's get to it. Vicki, um, the way we go with the story is the audience loves to know about you. They love an origin story. Uh, Christy's been on the show. And of course, I'll let her do a little bit of that too. But I want to start with you because the audience doesn't know you, or at least my audience doesn't. So give us a little bit of your background. Um, were you always an artist? Did you know you wanted to be an artist? Uh, you have a well, fantastic story. Yes, I used to make my paper dolls and I always did something that was creative. I mean, that's what I did to entertain myself. I was an only child and um, I had to keep busy. And then I got out of Minnesota as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and moved to New York City. I did go to college. You, I was an art major. I did pretty how good. How was that? Too. Was that was that everything you thought it would be being an art major, or was it too uh, formulaic for you? Well, it's a good easy. It's a good easy way to go to college. You can get good grades in art, and then uh, you can skim through everything else. And uh, I was always an A student in art, and I had a, a, a sculpture teacher that really, really took care of me and he he showed me graffiti and he took me to look at a pile of refrigerators and we drank beer and I was <laughs> a young girl and he already had a wife and a mistress. So I was just a good friend and he really was a fabulous teacher. I loved sculpture, I loved that experience. I had other good teachers too. My my painting teacher was a, a, a very, very talented man. And um, so, but then I went to New York and uh, well, first I went to Aspen, Colorado and that was fun. Why, why you, Aspen? You get jobs, you know, you just you have to survive on your own. And I started as a waitress and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm the cook in the kitchen and the... <laughs> And the owner is so happy because she's out there greeting guests with her husband. And I'm in there cutting up meat and stuff. It was an elegant fondue restaurant. And I loved it. And then... Uh, did you hone your craft out there? Did you did you continue as, as you're going through these jobs and you're going through school? Obviously, it's one thing to make paper dolls and be creative. It's another thing to make this your vocation, like your life's work. Right. Uh, were you always honing your craft? Did you decide at one point, this is what I really want to focus on? Uh, what was that process like for you? Well, all I know is that uh, I just like to, to go around. I wanted to know about everything. And I think New York was about the best place to find out. And if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And I, uh, I was a bartender and I had a really good job in the, in the, ap in the afternoon bartenders and all the guys, creative guys from... Um, you know, anyway, they were creative people. and But my friend said, we can't be a bartender forever. And so she got me a job with a photographer. And I worked with him for 10 years. And he was a real tough guy to work for. And the first thing he did to me in the 2000 square foot studio that we had, he threw a roll of toilet paper at me from the end of the studio. And he said, don't you ever buy one fly again. And it just kind of, <laughs> I got I got to the point where, you know, he was, a, he was nasty. But then when I started going to Studio 54 and staying out all night and partying and he'd start picking on me, I'd just go and take all the wine glasses out of the cupboard and just drop them on the floor. And, you know, you just kind of learn how to deal with somebody like that. And uh, I was just him for 10 years, major advertising photographer. And he is still um, memorialized today by a thousand fans. 
uh, 30 years after his death, they wrote a book about him because he was the champion of photographer's rights. Instead of, you know, just using your, your information and throwing a billboard up somewhere. And um, he'd go in that town and say, wait a minute, I did that shoot. And then he would charge for that billboard. And um, so I, I learned a lot. And, uh, so what about, and then, so we, we're talking a lot about other people's art. I want to talk about yours and your process. So let's talk about you. You, you obviously have had a lot of characters in your life, but let's talk about your, your work. When did you, when did you begin to formulate what you like to do, what your area of art is, or is there no area and you just love doing all things art? Well, what happened was I quit the job as a photographer because I wanted to be doing ceramics. I had taught myself ceramics and I had a show in, in New York, uh, a very good show with ceramics, but I was asked to see this art, Francesco Sconfulo, who's a, also a very famous photographer of celebrities. Yeah, yeah. And I really had to think about it because I wanted to do my ceramics, but I knew that he needed help somehow and it turned out, in a long story short, um, his studio was filled with carbon monoxide. And I was always dopey when I went home. I thought it was because I quit smoking. But then in the winter, I went, my God, you've got a gas leak. And the studio was about ready to blow up. And they turned down the gas in the middle of the winter. And nobody would speak to me. So I, that's when I quit my job. But his boyfriend, who didn't like me, was always rude. I saw him walking down the street about you know, three months later and he ran across the street and said, you saved our lives because it, that building would have blown up Wow! with the gas. Now tell Ted about your process. When did you start your actual process of creating your own art? Well, it's part of the life, you know, when I was doing the ceramics, I'm, I'm doing it. And it wasn't until really, I mean, art is how you live your life. In a way. And it wasn't until I did commercials down here for many years until about 2012 or 2011, I started to, I quit, I quit commercials. And then that's when I started to want to paint for, for real all the time. And she paints so painting. Every day, all the time. Every day. Yes. Well, it's a great so outlet. Christy, I want to ask, um, tell me why you, you obviously curate, you create, you're an amazing artist on your own, but you also invest in artists, meaning and pour into them and you recognize uh, the power of their art and the beauty of their art. What about what was it about Vicky and her story and her art that you said, this is something I want to do an exhibition, a show on? Well, I have followed Vicky for quite a, quite some time. I love her art. It's vivacious, it's bold. I mean, we have a piece behind us. I don't know if you can it's see beautiful, it yes. It, yeah, beautiful. It, it's, it has so much life to it, character. And, and she herself is quite a character, you know, her, in, in <laughs> her everyday life. Vicky wakes up in the morning, she eats, breathes, sleeps, everything paint. Her home is covered in paint. She is, I, I would say probably the most, um, as far as artists goes, she puts the most of her life, her personality into her art. And I've always loved that about her. Unfortunately, right now, Vicky has found herself at a time where she needs help. And this seemed like the perfect thing for Mills and myself to get behind so that we can help her in her time of need. I think the Orlando community who knows Vicky very well, um, I've, I felt like this would be a great opportunity for not only the artists, but the people in Orlando to come out and help one of their own at her time of need. And so for me, it was a joy, first of all, to have her here in the gallery, but to be able to do this for her when she needs it, it means so much to me. And I'm really hoping that the Orlando community hears this, sees this, comes out to support this artist because she's fabulous. I mean, and having a piece of her work now when it's still somewhat affordable, um, well, later on, I promise you, be worth a lot more down the road. Amen to that. It's an investment in her and an investment for the yeah. person. Let's talk about the show, which is Friday, June 30th, 6 to 8.30 at Mills.
Gallery. It's the Mills 50 Gallery. Uh, if you haven't been there, Chaos and Contrast. Uh, yes. what, how did that name come up? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I kind of was thinking of different names that I feel represent Vicky and her art. I mean, absolutely chaos was the first thing that came to my mind because when you look at her work, it's it's bold, it's all over, it's, it's so expressionistic, you know what I mean? So there's the chaos. And the contrast is that when she tries to put a family to it or a personality to it, or she gives it life, she gives it a name, and it becomes so important to her. Each piece, well, we say that our art is like our children. In this case, it certainly is for her. Well, I want to it's, say one thing. She's fabulous. Please do. Curator. She's fabulous. Oh, God. <laughs> she, she picked stuff that I would never have thought she would pick to show and show together. And I'm like, oh, these are good. They are good together. And they're very, very different. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and, and living Christy's in New York. amazing at that. Christy's amazing at that. She's just got an yeah. eye. And I, I think I think because she knows you and she knows your story, Vicky, it, it yeah. absolutely helps her because when she's going to speak about the art and when you're giving the tour and when you're talking with guests and patrons, it's so awesome to have somebody else also be able to tell your story and be able to express what your story is and why each piece was chosen. And I want to talk about the piece behind you. Does it have a name and what's the story? Yeah, the name, and I just named it, and I can't remember it, I think. Fire I, and Ice? Oh, that's it. Because <laughs> Fire and Ice. Yeah, I, we, some of the stuff I, this wasn't named when we picked it, and um, and it came to me, and I just told her now. I said, do you mind the name? I said, I like the name. And, yeah, I think it's perfect. Um, and it, it just makes you want to, I mean, I don't know. I love color. Well, the, the fire of the red, I mean, speaks for itself. And the blue brings yes. out the ice and the cold. So the contrast for her, I think, with and tell me if I'm not wrong, that the fire and ice for you means, you know, the strength and the power that you have and the, the feelings of passion come out in the red and the bright colors. I mean, you can explain it any better than that, be my guest. Well, no, and I saw <laughs> the orange circle, too. That kind of, anyway, uh, I'm known for my color. I mean... I'm known as it's, a colorful. It's beautiful. Well, yeah. when you're when you're, it's absolutely a beautiful piece, and I love the name. When you're painting something like fire and ice, are you thinking of someone? Are you thinking of a moment in your life? Are you thinking about something that inspired you? What is what's the process there when you're painting? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I shouldn't tell him, right? You okay. can tell him. Sure. So I I uh, I drink some wine at, at one o'clock, and I smoke some pot. <laughs> I didn't mean that you could tell him that part. <laughs> no, it's totally good. I love it. Legal. Fantastic. Okay, it's legal. And I do it. I have a heart problem in, in, the, in the blockage. Yeah. I got it because I could, but I didn't realize it corrected this heart blockage. Yeah. That, I mean, wow. it, I, that's it. But anyway, so I have a fun for a couple of hours. I do whatever I feel like doing. I run back and forth to, from my studio to the kitchen, I wipe off my palette and knife that I spread stuff with. And um, and I I can make my dinner when I'm doing that. And for like two hours, three hours a day, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm looking at a composition. When I was doing the bunnies, which she likes me to do. You have bunny, to come see the bunnies. The, the bunnies, bunnies are, are very popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bunnies are kind of my favorite. I have a, she has a bunny, if I can. Oh, yes, please, yes, has please a bunny tell the story. I love it. She she painted this bunny at the coronation when the king was having the coronation that day. And she included that aspect of what was happening in the world into the bunny scene. And I just love it. And I'm hoping that people come and just see this bunny and see how inspired she was by something that was happening in the world. And she brought it right into her for practice. He is coronated. He is the king bunny. He's the king bunny. <laughs> <laughs> He's the king bunny. Y'all, if you don't go just for that, I want to see the king bunny. This is kind of perfect for me. I had these cute, adorable little bunnies together on the canvas. And when oh, yeah. I woke up the next morning, I had smeared this orange paint on both sides of them. And I go, oh, what have you done? What have you done? 
And I went, oh, I painted the little bunny's paws the same color. So they did that painting. So it looks like the bunnies made the mess on the oh, side. Oh, that's when cool. I love that. <laughs> I mean, so that happens. You know, sometimes I make a mess. And uh, if you saw my floors, you'd do great. Yeah. And, uh, but I thought that was Trash really to treasure. I think that was trash fun. to treasure. Every somebody's trash is another person's treasure. You, you know, that's the great well, thing about art too. Right it speaks that. differently yeah. to different people. Yeah. It uh, when you go yeah. back and look at your art, because you, I, I love the process. First of all, thanks for sharing that because that's probably the most honest answer I've ever had to that question. And we all know it happens all the time with artists. <laughs> so just gonna say, uh, but when you go back and look at a piece, like after you've painted it, and you go back, or when you when you're looking at it or you sell it, like Fire and Ice, for example, do you do you get emotional? Do you feel something? And what are you feeling when you're looking at your paintings once they're painted and you've moved on to the next one and you go back and you look? That's a good painting. Fire and Ice is a good painting. And when I look at it, I go, I did a good painting. And I'm very critical of myself. And if I don't like it, it goes bye-bye. And I, I cut up a lot of them. She to- actually does. She'll actually cut it up. But I've seen her take some, what I thought were pretty good paintings, cut them up, but she creates a collage out of them, which is also wonderful. And I'd like to get back into that because they are, that's a good way of dealing with little bits and pieces. Yeah. And um, for artists, we don't, everything we do isn't always perfect. So sometimes you want to throw something away or paint over it or whatever, but she'll now recycle it into a collage that has its own personality as well, which is really super cool. I love that. Yeah. Repurpose, repurpose is, is amazing. How about how about an artist that inspires you, uh, Vicky? Is there an artist that you look at that you personally love their style or their message or it, it speaks to you? No, I, I don't really. I mean, I've kind of just... <laughs> Great answers. No, I love honest answers. That's good. I don't like canned answers. It's perfect. It is, well, it's just, I mean, I, I studied, you know, in the magazines years ago. I'd look at, you know, art and magazines. I have art magazines. But I just kind of got in my own world right now, you know. I mean, I I lived outside and, and, and now I'm living what's in here. And I'm, I'm enjoying my life. I've had a good life in all parts fantastic well, well, i want everyone social media too huh no i was just gonna say she doesn't even get involved in social media i know i'm tagging christy and the gallery and everything in our in our show post let's talk about let's give them the details christy of friday do they need to register where do they go what time give them all the 411 again no they come to the gallery um at uh, 1650 north mills and um we're there from 6 to 8 30. the doors will be open it's free to the public we're just hoping that you'll come in and appreciate this beautiful artist this her work is terrific and maybe support her buy a piece of art i mean every artist loves people who buy their art you know (laughs) but especially in this case um i'm really hoping that the orlando community will come together and we can support this artist. I mean, there are a lot of artists out there who are suffering and we need to help in any way that we can. But for Mills right now, this is the person that we we have chose to support. We love Vicky, we love her art. We have followed her for many, many years here in the art community and she deserves the help, so. She deserves it for sure. I want you all to go, go to Mills Gallery. It's Friday, June 30th, 6 p.m. You can also go to christyleeart.com. You can find the link to Mills Gallery on in the comments below. I want you all to get out. We talk about supporting our artists and our art community here. We have a strong community in the Orlando, Central Florida area. Let's get behind Vicky. Come out, support her, support, support the gallery. Uh, Christy and Vicky, what a joy to have you on the show. Vicky, you're amazing. Some of the most honest answers I've ever had when talking to an artist. And I want to encourage more artists to be just like Vicky when they answer, uh, because that's the kind of stuff that it I'm not in town. I'm not in town. But it, it'll uh, but be I'll, all month. Ted, the show will be running all month. And I, I did meet you oh, here. Perfect. Yeah, and I will absolutely um, we'll be a, there. We'll do a private tour. Yeah. I love a private tour. I love a private tour. <laughs> 
All right, you guys are amazing. Please go to christyleeart.com or go to Mills Gallery website, which is in the body of this message below in the comments. Thank you both so much. It's June 30th, this Friday, 6 p.m., 6 to 8.30. Get behind Vicki Wilson. Oh, there's Boris in the background there. We love our Boris. Say hi, Boris, before we head out. Boris is the curator, the gallerist, the, the amazing man over at Mills 50. Did I do well? Boris, you can cut the check later. I appreciate all of you so much. Um, everybody have a great day. Get behind Vicky. We will see you soon. Go on.